Although stocks made a big reversal today, our next guest says this rally is still at risk, but that could also be a buying opportunity. Let's bring in Julian Emanuel, chief equity strategist at BTIG. Julian, great to have you with us. Great to be here. It's clear as mud, isn't it? <laughs> buy, buy the dip? Buy the, I mean... Well, that's been the operating mantra for the last three and a half months. Uh, certainly the fourth quarter, you didn't want to be buying the dip. Um, in our view, there is an element of risk that's been injected here. You know, basically, and I think it's a very good point that today's lows are going to be something that everyone is going to focus on for the next, it's certainly till Friday, when we know exactly what the vice premier's, you know, how his dinner was Thursday night and whether those tariffs are going to for sure be on or perhaps something different. Um, the, the VIX at 12, as it was on Friday, in an environment with geopolitical risk, risk like this, with questions about global growth, um, it just doesn't make sense to us. So in our view, uh, you know, there is the potential for a near-term pullback. So on that pullback, Julie, I'm just wondering, because some people are saying that even if there is a deal that is to be announced at some point in time, that that would actually be a sell the news sort of event. So if the deal falls apart, it's a sell the news event, and the deal gets done, it's a sell the news event. At record highs, should we be long this market? Uh, if you're a long-term investor, you want to basically not look at the screen and sit and stand pat, because the one thing we do know is that volatility, both upside and downside, and, you know, if we go back to the last, you know, six months ago, we've seen plenty of volatility downside and upside. There's going to be more volatility. But ultimately, what we actually think, uh, if you're President Trump and you want the Fed to cut rates, you're going to put more tariffs on. That's going to dampen global growth. That's going to increase the probability that the Fed may be forced to become incrementally more dovish. So, Julian, I wanted to pick up on that point because in your notes you were saying we might get two rate hikes, or rate cuts out of the Fed. Is that two this year, yeah. do you think? And the market's not pricing that at all. So what happens to the equity markets with two rate cuts? Well, again, it depends on the path that we go to to get there. The Fed has made no secret about the fact that it's concerned about low inflation. And moreover, when we get the eventual downturn, and part of what concerned us over the weekend was seeing talk of, oh, the, you know, this slow growth environment has, has made the probability of recession non-existent in, in, in the near future. And that's the kind of dangerous, it's different this time talk that we don't buy whatsoever. Uh, but the point is, is that what you want to do is create a bit more inflation because it's going to slow down as the economy slows down. And in fact, we've already seen that over the last year when you think about the global picture in general. So from our point of view, either the GDP slows down a bit, we're already looking like it's a one number in the second quarter. And I'll tell you what, it's not gonna be a two number if these tariffs go in on on Friday, for sure. Um, you know, you combine that with the concern about inflation, and we think the Fed makes, a, there's a very interesting case for the Fed to go twice. And if you go twice this year, you're out of the way if there really is a downturn coming into an election cycle. But, but Julian, so if, if we get two Fed hikes, sorry, cuts, we, we have a dynamic here where oil and copper both rallied today. That makes sense to me on some level. Um, but how do you explain the dollar, which has been you know, arguably trying to break out? And, and, and that would be, to me, more about central bank um, divergence once again. Um, actually, if you look at a two-year chart on the dollar, it's, it's not a chart I would want to short. Uh, look, we, we agree. Um, in, in general, though, if you look at, yes, the dollar has been trying to break out. It's a very muted breakout yep. within a pretty tight range. You know, and what we would say that would be preventing the dollar from getting much, much stronger is the fact that we're going to have to finance a trillion dollar deficit uh, over the next 12 months. And that it, looking forward to the elections, there are going to be pro spending policies all over the place, and on balance, that's a negative. Julian, it's dollars. interesting you think two rate cuts. I mean, obviously, the president, if he's watching, and I know he is a fan of the show, so he's probably applauding you right now, but my pushback would be, wouldn't, wouldn't these be transitory events, U.S.-China trade talks, and to Janet Yellen's comments she made over the last few years? I mean, this would be transitory. This is something they should look past, no? It, it really depends, because I think one of the things that surprised all of us is if you look at it, the numbers have picked up in China over the last several months. Stimulus is working, which is also, by the way, a reason that China may decide to get tough and just say, OK, let's see what happens. But the problem is, is we all thought there was going to be lots of f flow through to Europe, and we haven't really seen that. 
and that's a concern for us. Last quick question. 3,000 is your target? Yes. So do we need the two uh, cuts in order to get to 3,000? Uh, not necessarily, but we need either that or China to work out or, heaven forbid, Brexit to work out. Okay. Julian, thank you. Thank you. Julian Emanuel of BTIG. I think it's important to remember, you know, in the throes of that sell-off in Q4, we also had an unforced error by this administration who got a little temperamental and walked away from a deal and the government got shut down. That was something that, again, so into this trade war, we had what was supposed to be this tailwind from these tax cuts the prior year, unforced error, walk away. We've seen this time and time again. We saw it in North Korea, just walked out of a meeting in Singapore. These are not the sorts of things that get iron out very quickly. I would fully expect a deal not to happen this week, and this is going to be part of the rhetoric. So with the S&P up 17 percent on the year, the best case scenario, if you are a bull and you want to get to his target, which is above the prior highs, is that we come back in maybe towards 2800. You chop around a little bit and then you get a scenario for a breakout to new highs into an election year, which we know are usually pretty strong. Look, for you know, G Julian talked about long term investors and how they should approach this. I, I totally agree with that. Um, if you're not that, um, you know, follow the playbook that makes a lot of sense to me, which is semis are going lower. Um, Apple's probably going lower. Anybody who seems like they're dependent upon a China trade right now, Alibaba, look at the, the, the disparate underperformance of Alibaba, even though I would argue they're not a global trade company. Those are the trades in the next couple of weeks to me that probably you could continue to lean on. You throw industrials in there? Uh, in, in terms of selling, yeah, but I, we started this whole segment with, is this a, do you still buy the dips? And I think for the longer to medium to longer term investor, yes, you do. Because to Julian's point, what happens if we get a weak stock market? What happens if we get a weak global economy? We get a Federal Reserve that's going to be much, much easier, and that's going to force money into stocks. So let's talk about six, 12 months time frame going into the election year. That's going to be the bullish part. In the meantime, I totally agree with Dan. I, you know, there's a non-trivial chance that we sometime this week find that the U.S. has pulled out of these talks or China's not getting on the plane or something like that. And I do think that could cause a pretty significant downturn in the short term in the market. More than what we've seen below today's low? Should have been today. I mean, it really should have happened today. I was surprised. I mean, I, I would push back and BK. I thought the market should have been a significantly lower given, to your point, the run we've had over the last two and a half, three months. But I think going back to what Tim said about the semis, I agree. I think a name like Texas Instruments at 116 is giving you a huge opportunity to get out of the stock you've been long and even go short if you want to, because this stock to me is too expensive.